Hey guys, we're jumping straight back into the previous video, we're just continuing on. So in this video we're going to be drawing the vector force polygon to scale, and we're going to be finding the total force on the wall from this polygon. So, to solve this problem, we need to draw a vector polygon. So we need to draw in all these forces, and that will allow us to find RW. So we know from the previous video we can find WCS, CW. We're not going. To, a lot of the time, we want to know the force in the wall. So we we already know C W just from the previous video. We can calculate that. But we need to find R W. And the way we do that is by drawing this polygon, this vector force polygon to scale. And we can scale off our answer for R W. So let's just see what this diagram will look like. The first thing we have in our diagram is the weight force. We have a weight force going down, and this all has to be to scale. Otherwise, it won't work. So to scale. So we're going to do an example in the next video where you'll see where I actually do this. But for now, we have a weight force coming down. Let's see if we can flip the case. So there's W, our weight force. The next force we draw in would be this CS force. So we know we would know the value of that because we have CS up here. So we could draw in CS. Now CS is at an angle of theta to the vertical. Okay? So we could draw in CS, which is at an angle of theta, which is the failure plane, which would, which would either be given to us or we have to assume, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, but it would be at an angle of theta. Now, the next force we could draw in would be CW, so CW is just vertical. So CW would be vertical. And once again, we'd have the value of these forces, so we'd know what scale to draw them. I'm not doing it to scale now, because just, I'm just showing you... Um, algebraically what's going on. The next video I'm going to draw auto scale, but this is just what it looks like. The next force we could draw in, so we've done the weight force, we've done CS and CW, and this would be the exact same for the um, passive case. We could draw, except all the forces going the up opposite direction. The next force we could draw in would be RS. Okay, so this force RS here. But to draw in RS, so RS is going to be going at an angle something like this. So say that's RS. Now we need to find what angle it's going at. So the way we do that is I'm just going to get a new piece of paper and show you. So we have RS, theta, and phi, phi subscript U. So I'm just going to redraw this just to show you how you can find the angle which it is at. So here's our wedge. We have RS at an oblique angle to the normal. So this angle is given as phi u, and we have theta here. Okay, so I'm just isolating the force RS. So just to show you, we have RS, phi u, and theta. So I'm just isolating this case for RS, which would look like this. Now, what I can do is, is I can construct a line here which is parallel to that line and that means that angle will be theta right hope that makes sense by alternate angles and we know that this and this so this black line to this dashed blue line is 90 degrees so we could find this angle in here which would be 90 minus theta minus phi u so all I did was was I went 90 which is between the black and the dashed blue line and we know that that angle will be 90 minus that angle minus that angle. So if I were to redraw this, we would have, um, so we would have our RS, so RS is at an angle, here's RS, and to the vertical, it's at an angle, so we just found RS and this angle, this vertical, would be 90 minus theta minus phi u. And if I continue this, we could do vertically opposite angles, and that would still be 90 minus theta minus phi u, which is the exact case we have. So we're going to go, so to the vertical, RS is at 90 minus theta minus phi u, phi u, sorry. So to the vertical, RS, so we're going to dash in a vertical line here, is 90 minus theta minus phi u. Um, I wouldn't derive this every time, I'm just showing you how you get it though. So we went from this to this, 
we saw that RS was at 90 minus theta minus phi u to the vertical, so like that. So similarly, in this diagram, we went to the vertical at 90 minus theta minus phi u. And the last force we could dash in, the last force we have is RW, the reaction force on the wall. So we would go like this, which would be RW. And RW is at an angle of phi w to the horizontal. So this angle in here, that angle in there would be phi w. So there is our polygon of forces. That is how we draw it. So to draw this, we would have to know theta. We would have to know phi u and phi w to know all these angles, which would be given to us. Um, they will definitely be given. This one we're going to talk about now. But we would draw this diagram. And then what we would do is, we, say if we want to find the total force on the wall, we'd come, so we, we would know that value and that value and the weight force because we found, found those using these formulas here, but we don't know RW, and we find RW by just scaling the answer off the diagram. So this diagram has to be drawn to scale for that to work. So now what we could do is, we would have a, we could isolate the forces. So the forces acting on the wall are CW and RW. So we have CW, and RW. So these are the reaction forces on the wall. If we want to find the total force on the wall, so these are reaction forces. To find the total force acting on the wall, we have to flip them. Because these are reaction forces of the wall, we want to find the force acting on the wall. So that's the opposite of reaction. So what we would do is we could we construct a triangle that would look something like this. So CW is in the up direction and RW is in that direction going up like that so we would have to flip these around so we would have RW coming down like that and we would have CW coming down like that uh, we would then find so as you can see I flipped the forces because we want to know the force on the wall we could find the total force, so F total on the wall, and this RW is at an angle of phi W, so phi of the wall. Okay, so we've just flipped it, so RW is now going the opposite direction, and that angle is still phi W, so the diagram would look like this, and then we could construct a line parallel to that line which means that that angle in there would also be phi w and this is obviously 90 degrees there so we would know that this total angle would be 90 plus phi w and then we could use the cos rule to find f total so we would have f total squared equals the cos rule is a, a squared plus b squared so cw squared plus rw squared minus 2 outside of AB, so CW, RW, cos, cosine of 90 plus phi W, okay? And you would find this and square it both sides to get the total force, so the magnitude of the total force, okay? Um, the last thing we're going to talk about is just this theta value. So theta could even be given to you. You could, you could be asked to find um, the failure at a particular plane, but sometimes theta might not be given to you. So you would have to assume a theta value, and you would know that your theta value is correct if your polygon looks like this, so it all matches up. But what might happen is that if you choose an incorrect theta value, your polygon might look something like this. So that would be our weight force. We would have CS, CW, um, RS, and you could see that you have RW, okay? Now, that is the incorrect direction. So for our one, for the active case, RW was coming up like this, okay? It's coming up at an, it's coming from left to right, yeah? Which makes sense from the diagram we did for this theta. It was coming from left to right, so the arrow is pointing that way. But as you can see in this one, it's going from right to left. So you can see that RW is going from right to left, which tells you that your theta 
was incorrect. Your, th your theta value you chose was incorrect because your RW is not meant to be facing that direction. Your RW has to come in from somewhere th on this side to the end, like that. So your theta value you chose was incorrect, which means you'd have to redo this problem for a different theta value. So anyway, guys, in the next video, um, we're going to be doing an example to put all these ideas together. I know it could be quite confusing, but um, we're going to do a, a numerical example and all the ideas will come into place. So I recommend you watch the next video. Hope that helps.